lack of oxygen, they die. Fish creating CO2 from their waste, they die. Water getting too hot, they die. Overcrowding, they die. Too much stress, they die. From sloshing them around, they die. Now, if you're anything like me, spending your hard-earned money, because live bait is expensive, or spending a ton of time catching by cast netting or lifting up rocks, you spend all this time trying to find live bait, only to find out seconds before you're about to put it on your hook, it's dead. Or some of them are in their fourth quarter, barely living. And even if I do fish with the ones that are still technically alive, they're still not going to perform and catch fish like that live healthy bait fish or crawdad or thread fin or shrimp or whatever you like to use. And this happens because you need one main ingredient to keep that bait live and healthy for you and that's water circulation It's going to keep those oxygen levels steady and solid. And there's a plethora of videos out there on YouTube if you want to DIY up something for yourself. I'm a fan of DIYing. In fact, a lot of times I feel like I can make a better product that's actually out there on the market. And sure, you can rig up a styrofoam cooler with a bubbler and give your bait a little bit more time. You'll see videos out there where you can put frozen water bottles in your coolers. That will give you a little bit more time if you don't shock your bait fish. And you can even DIY a water pump. You can hook that up to a 12 volt battery if you're handy and know what you're doing and actually know how to run wires so you don't shock yourself. But a lot of these DIY options actually only give you a little bit more time and not the time a lot of us need when we're going out for those six to eight hour trips or overnight trips. So if you don't have the time, I actually want to demo a solution for you. It's kind of new to the Mark. Here's the thing, the company's not paying me for this video. I really only created this video because I thought it brought value to you because I recently did a poll and around 50% of you use live bait. So I'm gonna demo for you this guy, the ultimate live well kit from Gopher Outdoors. They say it includes everything you need for live well bait management. So let's so hop in, let me show you how it works. I'll make this easy for you. Bro. All right, this is your base unit. This is your pump float, and this is your water pump. So you're gonna take this off, and it's real easy. Gonna push that through there, and it clicks right in. And this is gonna float in the water as it sucks water up to your live well. Flip your base over. That's where your batteries go. Boom, there you are. Actually comes with seven volt rechargeable lithium ion batteries. These things are beasts. Just go and throw those in. Good to go. Put that back on. Got yourself a toggle switch here. I'll go through the modes in a little bit. Essentially, fill, low, high, recirculating. All right, this is your core assembly. And the cool thing about this is you can convert your rotomolar coolers, your Yetis, your Arctics, your angles without drilling holes. You can just kind of screw this thing right in and you can turn your cooler into a live well, which is pretty rad. Also what this does, if you don't have a rotomotor cooler, because those things are expensive, you can, just, you can actually drill into a bucket and make a five gallon bucket your live well system, which I'm going to do for you today. So we're going to take this bucket turn into a live well and then I'm going to show you how it will fit nicely into my fishing kayak which I like to fish out of. So now you're going to need to flip your bucket over and grab a hole saw. You might be thinking to yourself, I don't have a hole saw. Well I got good news for you. They provided one for you. Check that out. So just grab a drill, tighten her up. Keep in mind this lip here. You don't want to get too close to the bottom because um, this assembly got a has a lip on it as well. So kind of put that up a little bit right about there. Easiest Sunday morning. Now being that you have some rough edges here, take some sandpaper. You might be thinking, I don't have any sandpaper. Well, I got good news for you. They provided some. So go ahead and sand that out. I like it. All right, next you want to take your contoured gasket and you kind of see this gasket isn't like a, a straight up ring. It actually has an angle to it. That's because the inside of your bucket is rounded. So let's go install that on the inside and it fits nicely in there. See that? So that's set. Got sticking out the side here. All right, next take your screw lock. Go ahead and tighten that to the bucket. Double check before you tighten it the last second that the seal on the inside is nice and contoured with the bucket. Now just take your core assembly, screw that in. Boom, it's got a nice seal right there. Next you're gonna take your bell housing, you're gonna connect it to your elbow, connect it to the elbow connector, and then you can connect that to your drain tube. Only takes about a second. One, that's already in there, just like that. And then this is going to go to the inside of your bucket. As you can see, this has a little funky design down here because it fits perfectly into your housing unit, just like that. What I like about the design is that, you know, if you kick it around or something, this is, it isn't rigid, so it's not gonna break on you. Um, so pretty cool design there. And just suction it to the side. On right, the bottom of the main housing, you're gonna see air and 12 volts. So you're gonna pump your air pump I'll plug that into there. Now over here, this is kind of optional. You can either use the batteries or they actually provide some large alligator clips that you can connect to your 12 volt battery if you prefer to power it that way. To attach to the pump float, simply take this guy. Really easy connection. 
push that in, push it down, and turn it counterclockwise. And that's connected. And you connect this to the power. So I'm gonna do that real fast. Just like you see on my fish finder. Connect that to this guy. And then throw this guy right there. It'll fit nice and snug. And this is what's gonna sit in the water, in your bucket, into the lake, off your kayak, off the jetty, off the dock. And it's what's gonna pull water and circulate it for you. So, all right, first one's really easy. It's the air pump. Go and slide that one over. Just push it home. And this one goes right in here. Push that guy on there. There we go. All right, now let's talk about the multiple modes here. You got fill, low, high, and recirculation. So fill is also obviously gonna fill the bucket. High is gonna pump water one minute for every three minutes, so 20 cycles per hour. Low is gonna pump one minute for every four minutes, so 15 cycles per hour. And then recirculation mode is for whenever you are transporting bait. Now that this is all set up, this runs up here. All the cords are nice and tidy. I got a drain tube here that would, if you're on top of a dock, would just run back into the water, or you can run this outside of your your kayak. Let's go ahead and turn this on. To the left, let's hit high. And there we have it, folks. Pump water up, in, your nice bait, swimming around, staying healthy, pumping the water out, recirculating it. Portable. You can toggle it to the left, which uses the battery. You can toggle it to the right to use the 12 volt if you decide to use those alligator clips. You've got 16 feet of tubing, so if you do fish from a high dock, or if you fish in the ocean, you're out in the pier, this will drop 16 feet and still pump water, which is pretty impressive. Those batteries that I talked about, lithium ions, will last you six hours before you need to recharge them. And the water pump there is going to pump two gallons per minute. Also comes with this, which is a recirculation adapter. It has a carbon filter down in there. They actually give you a few more as well. So if you're transporting bait for a long period of time, you could hook up your pump to this and recirculate the water, filtering out through that carbon filter. And the beauty of using a bucket for this thing is that they fit nicely in the back of the kayak crates. And you could modify this so the pump float could go down through your scupper hole. You can run it off the back. But nonetheless, if you're out kayak fishing, which I like to do, it's a great mod there. You probably have to make your own kayak crate to fit it, but that would be easy to do. If you love kayak fishing and want more videos like this, hit that sub bell. I'll keep them coming. Thanks for watching. See ya. Bye.